Hello YouTube. Got a couple things done. Just mounted this uh, anvil. It's uh, got a 70 on the side. I'm assuming that means it weighs 70 pounds. It's probably a 20th century anvil. I think it's uh, cast. Now, I'm showing the, the surface of the top of the anvil. And uh, this one was was really rough. Now it was um, it it was uh, not usable. The face was really beat up, broke up. So I uh, welded and covered the whole thing with stainless. Now I did this back in the '80s when I was uh, working in the um, food processing industry, uh, making equipment. Mostly everything we did was stainless, and. Uh, so, uh, I made a stainless face anvil, beaten on stainless. Did a lot of uh, food grade, sanitary. You could see where the, uh, it was completely gone from here to here and beat down. So, it was a lot of work. So I just thought I'd uh, show what I got done. I got uh, my swedge blocks mounted. This one here is really good shape. This one here is pretty much beat up. I think this one was in a production shop or in a shop that's seen a lot of work. They actually drilled holes in it and knocked off ears. In fact, almost all the corners. Uh, but I got it and uh, I went ahead and mounted it. This one here is another nice one. This one is, now this one's pretty beat up too. I mean, it's serviceable and it feels pretty smooth. But if you look at it, it looks like it's got a lot of nicks in it. Running my hand across there, it's, it actually feels smoother than those nicks would show. And it, here's a, a double horn. Now this one here, I'm gonna to have to call a, an ASO, anvil shaped object. This is, this is I bought this one new. I think it's probably uh, made in Japan or China. I don't know, I've had it since uh, probably 1980. I've had all this stuff sitting around and, and now that I'm stuck in the backyard, I'm mounting everything. I got this mounted up. I really, this is my old standby. I've had this thing since the 70s. Uh, didn't have a, a, the pieces to mount it or the spring. So I forged up the spring and and this one's, uh, this one's done now. So it goes with, uh, with the other ones that I have. And uh, Of course, I, I did this one a while back, and I just wanted to show you this other one. This is another one that I I got that was in really rough shape, and it was. Uh, now I'm gonna say, you know, this this had to be 40 years ago when I did this, uh, and uh, I uh, this face was really really beat up, so I uh, welded uh, stringers of stainless just like I did the other one. And this one here, I, you know, it is a lot of work, a lot of grinding, a lot of cleaning up. But I got it out and I figured I'm gonna go ahead and finish this one and I wanted to get it up off the ground so I mounted it. Now I, I uh, this one is actually mounted higher than what they would say uh, a blacksmith's anvil should be mounted. There, uh, it's a, rule of thumb that you uh, make a fist and when you walk up to your anvil like this one this is a little Henry right your fist should just uh, come across the face of the anvil that means when you're swinging your hammer you get a full swing but uh, I'm not a Blacksmith, I'm, a, I'm just an amateur. 
This is my good one, my little 400 pound, which I love and use the most. And I mounted it too so that uh, my fist comes up and just uh, touches the top of the face. So you get a full swing out of it. But what happens is when I've been trying to forge these um, pineapple twists and some different twists and you have to uh, follow lines and see what you're doing and uh, I got to bend over and uh, just uh, hard on an old man's back. This one right here is a 150 pound Peter Wright. It's a pretty good anvil too. So what I did, now I mounted that one over there. up higher. I mounted this one up higher uh, and I'm going to try it out. Uh, I got so many anvils I just uh, try different heights to see if I can uh, try forging on here. Uh, be a little easier on my back. Bending over just just uh, really gets me. So anyway, there you have it. Been uh, a little bit busy. Got a little bit done out here. I'm. Uh, this is my second forge. I'll tell you one thing good about making forges with a receiver because if you get a two and a half inch uh, square tubing 3 16 wall they can act as your receiver. I cut a little six inch piece and, and drill a couple holes put some half inch uh, uh, well some half inch nuts on there to tighten everything down good. It, it, it'd be rated at easily uh, 500 pounds and you can put this anywhere and that's that's really what I did here and it just makes it convenient of course you have to have a pole or a post or something to mount it to and and uh, mine are all welded on here but you could uh, make weld it to a, a plate and bolt it to a a wooden beam and you put some four big lag bolts in there and and I think uh, it would still be rated for 500 pounds and, and I even have my post vise on here now I did this because because it's a, a trailer and it's mobile and I take it out to the shows but you could set this up in your own shop and uh, uh, when you when you uh, do put your uh, everything on receivers and you put your receivers up there you can actually switch out put whatever you want and you also have the uh, opportunity to put it at any height that you want which works best for you like like I have a standard height right here all the way around my trailer and I found out that for certain things it might be a little high but this vise it works out fine so this one here that I have my uh, forge on is about I don't know, about four or five inches lower, just that much. And you can uh, you can uh, customize them to whatever your needs are. All right. Uh, got any comments? Leave them below if you like it. Hit the like button. Thanks a lot. Bye.